So if you're hunting for baby gear and really considering some expensive options to add to your registry or you're looking for big deals on some products, I wanna highlight five overpriced baby items that you might not need and what to get instead. Now, as always, new dads can join our private Discord server linked down below to chat with me or other guys in our dad community. Uh, we also have courses up through year one of fatherhood. So if you know a dad that can use some guidance, go ahead and check that out. I haven't really called out particular strollers in the past to really avoid outside of the Diono Traverse, but these two strollers in particular come in at a very high price tag and I simply don't think that they're worth it. And the first one's gonna be Orbit Baby. Now, if we're talking about just the optics of this, it looks really intriguing and something that like a lot of celebrities would probably gravitate to. Uh, and it kind of feels like an exclusive product, especially when the travel system as a whole is priced at over $1,600. I was actually asked to review this stroller, but after really looking into it and testing it out, I just, I really just don't think that it's worth the price tag. Uh, and to make a long story short, it's too clunky, impractical, and the swivel is a little bit gimmicky. If you're gonna be spending over $1,000 on a travel system, I would just highly encourage you to stick with either Nuna or Uppa Baby. These are tried and true options, great daily usage, better form factor, I can't say enough good things about them. And yeah, I know that they're pricey, but if you are already willing to spend that much on a, on a travel system, I would steer clear of Orbit Baby. Now, the other stroller that I would personally kind of avoid, it really pains me because it's from Silver Cross, which is a brand that I really, really like. Like, I love Silver Cross, but I can't consciously recommend that you get the Jet 3 travel stroller. At over $400, there are just too many things that don't sit well with me, including the seat, which couldn't really hold an upright position for my kiddo, uh, the basket being basically inaccessible from the rear and then blocked by this crossbar coming down the middle. Uh, and then the overall push and feel, it's just a little bit too shaky for me. So if you're looking for a quality travel stroller option, I can confidently say that the Bugaboo Butterfly is a much better option at a similar price point. Uh, the upper menu is also great. I think Butterfly edges it just a little bit as I've talked about in the past. And the Ergo Metro Plus is also a great option uh, and that's priced a little bit closer to the $200 range. So if you're looking for something a little bit less, Ergo Metro Plus, Jet 3, just not for me. Next on my list is gonna be the Four Moms Bassinet. In short, the, the bassinet is basically kind of similar to the Four Moms Mamaru, where it can uh, sway your baby, has different motions, rocking motions, as well as sounds on board. But for me, if you're gonna splurge, then splurge. Go ahead and get Snoo. Or, you know, it, it, something in that price range, the Halo Bassinet, which I did a review on. I mean, that wasn't my favorite, but I mean, if you're a breastfeeding mom, that thing is phenomenal uh, for that side dipping wall. I just don't think that those motions that you're paying for are worth it. And again, bassinets, you're only using them for a very limited amount of time before you transition them into a crib. So I just, you know, I think if you're gonna splurge, you should splurge up to this new because that is a phenomenal product. The rocking motion, I just think they're unnecessary. They don't really do the job. And if they do do the job, your baby might form a dependence and you have to deploy this strategy of like reducing the motions little by little by little so that it, they're not so dependent on it and you have to like strategize this way to like wean them off. I would keep it much simpler with just a standalone bassinet. Uh, I mean, if you do want the motions or, or the vibrations, uh, the Halo Bassinet has something like that. Uh, not full movements, but they've got vibrations and sounds and stuff like that. And the sounds aren't good anyway. Use something like a, a you know a ROM sound machine like I've talked about in the past or a Hatch Rest Plus. Uh, those are gonna be much better than the onboard sounds are gonna be <laughs> featured on the bassinet anyway. Number three on my list is gonna be any swing over $100, whether that's like the Nuna Leaf or the, or the Mama Roof, well, that actually just got recalled, but any major swing with all these features that are being packed in there doesn't matter because there's a 50-50 chance that your little is not even gonna like it. I know so many parents who've complained about like swings where they're like, kid didn't even like the swing, right? And we spent like $400 for it or whatever. So if you want any sort of big swing, I would encourage you to go on Facebook Marketplace and try to find it secondhand. You don't need to spend over $100 on a swing. I, you can probably find these things for 75, 50 bucks, right? Um, we uh, we didn't go with, a, well, we had the Mama Roo, we were just a little bit disappointed with that. Um, so we, for our third baby, we went with a simple Fisher Price option. It was a hand-me-down from our sister-in-law, worked great, functioned perfectly. The swing was okay for maybe two days. And ultimately, she just didn't settle in it. I think spending over 100 bucks, anything on a, on, on a product that's just gonna have a 
50 shot at actually comforting your baby, it's just not worth the investment. So spend under a hundred bucks on a swing or just, you know, the big marketing things with all these features and stuff like that, it's just not worth it to me, in my opinion. Next on my list is gonna be bumbo seats and entertainment centers, or um, I think they, uh, they call them extra saucers. Uh, so we're, we're, we'll start with the bumbo seats. In the case of, of, of the bumbo seat, the main reason to kind of avoid these is that they're actually pretty dangerous and there's a big tip over risk and uh, falls are actually a lot more common than, than a lot of people realize. It was it was recalled a few years ago uh, because you know there were just too many falls so they added like this little belt but even then there are still plenty of tip overs that could happen. Uh, but the bigger thing uh, than just the, the tip overs and the fall risk is that it can actually stunt your baby's development. Because they're like locked into their seats and put in this upright sitting position, they don't have the opportunity to learn how to roll on their tummies, strengthen their back and neck muscles during tummy time, uh, and, then, and then learn how to get in the city in the seated position by themselves and learn how to balance and, and kind of work the core muscles that they need to. Uh, you're stunting that development. It's better to let them learn that with a lot of tummy time uh, and that learning process as opposed to just plopping them in, in a bumbo, just kind of sitting them upright. Now, I don't think it's bad, right? Because of the first two kids, like we didn't really know that. We we use bumbos. I mean, uh, it's just something to be aware of and, and why we're not using them for baby number three. Now, the next thing that we talked about or that we're gonna talk about are extra saucers. The same concern of stunting the development is uh, also gonna be evident here with these entertainment extra saucers saucer things. The idea here is that you place them in these extra saucers and they're and it's supposed to teach them how to like stand up and, and, and stay in a, in a standing position with a little bit of support. Now the thing is in most cases your baby's actually gonna like lean forward and rest their chest or their, or their tummy on, on the front of their seat and they're gonna have to like arch their back a little bit more to like kind of play with the toys that are in front of them. Uh, they're often on their tiptoes. And, and basically all these variables of like positioning, put them in the complete opposite position for them to be able to learn how to stand independently. Now, I'm not 100% opposed to these things because honestly, I have a five month old right there and she's in an extra saucer as we speak. But you know, she's not in it for like long periods of time. Uh, and, it's, and it's not something that we rely on. But we, you know, we put her in there on occasion just because, you know, she likes it. She has a couple minutes where, you know, where uh, she can have fun and we can, she actually does like, like a lot and gives us a moment to go cook, do laundry or, or whatever. Now, with all that said, our focus really is on practicing a lot of tummy time and using a lot of toys during tummy time, toys that are going to encourage her to reach and grasp while simultaneously building the right muscles in her neck and her back, which are eventually going to play into her being able to sit unsupported down the line and learning to pull herself up eventually to a stand shortly thereafter. At this very moment, we've got the, where is it? Actually, let me, let me take a moment to show you what we have. At this very moment, we've got this sensor play kit from Love Every. And in this play kit, there are things like kind of like this soft, colorful ball, as well as like this little doodad, which you put in front, we, we put in front of Sienna and she'll kind of reach and grasp for it, but it always kind of tries to evade her. So she's always trying to chase it around. But this whole time she's on her, st uh, she's on her stomach, her head is up. She's really building that strength that she needs to eventually learn how to get up to sitting and then standing. There are a lot of great options in here. I'll, I'll link this Love Every box down below because I think it actually is kind of a helpful thing. We've really enjoyed Love Every as a whole. I've worked with them in the past. If you follow this channel, you know I'm a fan of Love Every. Now, the last thing on my list are gonna be expensive play yards or travel cribs, options like the Nuna Senna Air, the Yappa Baby Remy, uh, Bugaboo Stardust, uh, the, the Baby Bjorn, the Four Moms Breeze. These are all play yards that hover at or above the $300 mark. And, but the thing is, these these aren't actually bad products. In fact, they're all, <laughs> they're all really good products. But the question is, are they that much better than a simple pack and play for under $100? To me, the answer is no. I think that they're overpriced. And with the exception of the Baby Bjorn, they're also really heavy. And the point of, for me, the point of a travel crib or a, pro, or a play yard is to be light and portable. So if you're gonna make the splurge on a big expensive play yard, I would go with the Guava Lotus over any of those. And that's a little bit lower at 250. Otherwise, I would just stick with a simple Graco pack and play. I don't think you need to shell out 300 plus dollars for these options that aren't actually that much exponentially better than something that you can find for 100 or less. 
Now, if you are interested in the travel crib that I just talked about, it is called the Guava Lotus. Uh, we did this whole video on how to travel with kids. And in that video, we do feature the Lotus because that is what came along with us to a recent trip. So I would highly encourage you to go ahead and check out that video because it's just gonna be a good thing for you to know, especially with holiday travel coming right up. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button down there. It looks like a thumbs up. And for more videos and reviews for young families, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this video and come back for the next one. God bless, later.